We got a new thing, too. <laughs> What's up? that you're continuously developing with Andre James as your new center? Yes. Um, Andre, uh, someone who's been around for a few years now. Um, so a lot of practice reps with him when Rodney wouldn't um, practice on a Wednesday or things like that. And, uh, um, you know, yes, he's a new starting center, but I feel like I've you know, got a couple thousand reps with him, you know, if that makes sense. Um, you know, through the practice years, he started the Detroit game for us a, a while back and uh, did a great job, showed flashes of, Someone with great understanding and things like that, and toughness, and all the kind of traits you need at the at that spot. Um, obviously, we had Rodney, who everyone you know would say he's one of, if not the best center in the whole league. You know, and uh, it's hard for a guy like Andre to play in front of that guy. So now that uh, you know Rodney uh, is gone, Andre can step in and fill that spot, and I feel super confident that uh, you know he's going to do he's going to do a great job. You know, I'm not I'm not going to compare him uh, to anybody, but. Um, we haven't put pads on yet. We don't. We haven't played any games yet, so I don't want to put any expectations out there for him. But uh, I, I'm excited for him because he's super smart, and uh, I, I believe he's a good football player. So um, our relationship's super close. Inviting him to the house, inviting me to come eat some steaks. The, the steaks they cook over at the O-line place are a little different than the one that I eat, you know. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's been a great relationship so far. Derek, um, unlike last year, um, you had a whole offseason uh, to kind of build a little bit of foundation. I know it's early, but based on what you've seen of the defense, um, a lot of focus has been on that side of the ball. Can you feel a little bit of a difference uh, on in that group? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, again, I believe Coach Gunther is a really smart football coach. You know, uh, some of the things, um, you know, that he was asking them to do, like he, he knows what the offenses are doing and things like that. And, Sometimes a certain scheme doesn't mix with certain players, you know. So that's just that's just true, you know. That's that's true for anyone in the league, whether you play receiver, running back, you know, a zone scheme, a, a gap scheme, you know. It depends for everybody, you know. And I still believe that Coach Gunther is one of the best, you know, one of the smartest coaches I've ever been around. And then Coach Gus Bradley, you know, who I was around for the Senior Bowl and now have competed against for seven, now going on eight years, really, um, is again same, super smart. The presence that Coach Gus, uh, you know, carries to the field, you can feel that. You know, um, there's one voice when he talks; all 11 eyes on that defense are looking at him. You know, and that's that's impressive. You know, you, you when you go into their defensive meeting room, you know who has the attention, right? And uh, I, 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 you know, I think it's good. I think it makes our guys excited. You know, they're tired of talking about all this stuff. You know, um, just like I. You know, I've gotten older and wiser just to get away from it. You know, you just just get away from that stuff. You know, but some of these guys are young and it's the first time they're going through that in their life, and they're sick of it. You know, and you can definitely feel that that urgency and that that uh, that demand that he's bringing and they're they're taking. You know, it's one thing for a coach to bring it; it's another thing for him to bring it and the players to accept it and say, "Yeah, we're going to ride with that guy." And they they've done that. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for him. Well, we got a tough challenge in this in this division. You know. Gus knows that, you know, um, but, you know, we're very, very optimistic, very excited, and you can definitely feel a difference, and the more you guys are around Coach Bradley, you'll hear him, and, you know, I mean, it's literally every play. He's he's on someone about something, whether it's their step or, you know, how they fit on a tackle, you know. I mean, it's just the detail is unbelievable. It's like it's like Gruden, you know, the amount of detail that we go into, the same thing that he's doing. It's impressive. Eric, feed off of Levi's question, your relationship with Andre, last year, before things started opening up, you had to find a park to build a rapport with, build some relationships. Yep. Um, this year, it's a lot, been a lot easier. Is, yeah. is it important for you to, before OTAs, to, to sort of build, rebuild chemistry um, and that, that personal rapport? And how have you done that with this year's receiving core? Yeah. Uh, you're saying with the receiving core? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing around here, it's been nice because we've had some carryover in the last couple of years, you know. Um, to where, you know, not only is it a new guy and running new routes, you know, you know when you're adding people like Smoke, right? He, not only is he coming in and he's a new guy, I got to learn how he cuts on certain routes. They all cut differently, you know, and they all want to run a route certainly, certainly different. But you're teaching them a system too. Well, we don't have a lot of guys like that. You know, it's really him, Willie, you know, some of the young guys. But, you know, Hunter's played, Zay's played. Um, you know, Brian has played in this offense. Henry's played in this offense. You know, and it, it helps the uh, – the relationship part, you know, uh, you know, going forward, you've played games with these guys. So when I'm like, hey, remember 
such and such play in Denver. You know, hey, third, third, third down of the game. I need you to, I need you to run it like this. You know, more like this. And they have recall of that. Whereas with a whole bunch of new guys, it makes it harder because you don't have that. You know, you're just kind of talking through it, watching it on a TV screen, and then, all right, now I need you to go do it physically. So um, having only a few of those guys, it helps because you're not, you're not having to. You know, kind of teach a guy. Hey, I need. Can you do it like this? Or can you? I know you did it like that, but I just feel comfortable if you do it like this. You know, and kind of mixing those worlds. And really, with these guys, um, we spend so much time together. You know, I, I would challenge these guys in the off season. You know, just to see what they would say. You know, it's our off time. We don't have anything that we have to do. But they'd be like, Hey, let's throw it back. Perfect. See it five forty five. You know, and they'd be like, Deal. Like every one of them to the man was like, Yeah. See you there. And that, I was just kind of just testing them. You know, I just wanted to see if they'd be like, well, can we go at, you know, eight? Can we go, you know, I just wanted to see what they'd say. And they were like, deal. So I was like, dang, I got to wake up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, but it was impressive because when you do something like that, you, you grow certain bonds, you know, with guys. And I think our relationships are super strong. So I'm excited about it. Deshaun Reed for the Athletic. Uh, last year it seemed like you were a little bit more aggressive in the yeah. past. Obviously, that's some big plays, but yeah. also kind of comes with turnovers naturally. Yeah. How do you balance that as a quarterback between wanting to push the ball, but also knowing you have to protect the ball at the same time? Absolutely. It's a great point. Um, you know, one, one you got to have the personnel to do it. And that doesn't just mean receivers. You know, that means up front, too. Um, you know, as Coach Gruden will say, he wants completions. You know, I don't care what they are, I want completions. You know, and that's drill. I mean, that's. When I wake up, I'm thinking his voice completions, you know. And so now that, um, you know, last year we brought Nelly and we drafted Henry. Uh, Zay can fly. You know, we got guys that can go Waller, obviously. We know that. Um, and then the O-line. And there's a certain time to, you know, I know based on our relationship now. It's, we're going on four years. So I know when he calls a certain play and when he calls the certain play, what he what he's expecting, where he expects that ball to go versus certain coverages. Um, so early on it was hard, but now it's e it's I can't say it's easy. There's nothing in this game that's easy, but it's it's easier because I know what's expected. Um, I know what he wants, and I've told you guys a hundred times. I'm just trying to do exactly what he wants, you know, every single time, and I don't do it perfect every time. But that fine line of you know, if, if he expects the ball to go there, then now he expects the receiver to make that play or win, you know, and. Uh, and like he'll say, you know, if, if he can't win, we'll find another guy that can't. You know, if, if you can't throw it there, we'll find another guy that can throw it there. You know, that's just how coach coaches. And uh, and so the demand is there and the knowing of of the offense and what he wants. You know, again, you know, offenses I've been in in the past are like this, you know, with Coach Gruden. It hasn't stopped yet, you know. And we're In four years, we're still adding, you know, and we're still going. We're still pushing that that envelope. So uh, having an understanding of what he wants and what's expected helps that, I think. Um, and, and, and two, uh, you know, another thing I learned watching, because I was, you know, we had the guys and we were letting them go and we were calling those things to send it deep. You know, one thing I did is holding the ball too long and fumbling, right? And watching and studying why why, why was it on those plays, or why, was it was I drifting in my drop? Was was it this or that? So uh, it, it was good to to have that film because now I think we'll be better at hopefully limiting turnovers on those plays. Your uh, Ed Green is in the review journal. He asked John this yesterday, kind of as the leader in the locker room. Is there an inherent need to discuss with guys who are not vaccinated why you think it's important, and what mm -hmm. you mean, or is it a individual um, decision where you kind of back off and say everyone needs to decide? Yeah, it's, hard. it's it's so hard, you know, like everything, you know, no matter what I say, someone on one side will be mad and someone on the other, you know, there's a lot of that that's been going on the last four or five years, you know, and, uh, and it's like, man, I don't even want to stand up here and answer those, you know, uh, but to, to, to answer that, I, I personally feel like, you know, I, I've been getting shot since I was a little kid, you know, I have my, you know, my mom take me out of school early, hey, we gotta go get this shot, you know, I remember that as a kid, my kids too, you know, and those things, and this one, it's a little different because it's new, right? You know, uh, you know the other ones was measles, mumps, you know, he, you know, all those kind of things, hepatitis B, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, this one was new, so got so people and families have certain opinions, and uh, I'm I, I can if someone wants to ask me my opinion, I, absolutely, I'm sharing my opinion, absolutely. Um, you know, but if if they don't want my opinion, I don't think it's my right to go tell them what to do as as a as a man. You know, um, especially in America, you know, I, I don't think it's my right to do that. So. Um, if they want my opinion, I will absolutely give it 100%. No problem with that. But I think it's up to them and their family because uh, they they know what they want to do for their family. I'm not 
I can't make the decisions for them and like their kids and stuff. Yeah. Derek, are you noticing that this rookie class is a little bit further along than last year's rookie class now having OTAs and many under their belt? Yes, yes, absolutely. I think, I think if you could stand up here and give that answer yourself, uh, you answered it perfectly. <laughs> like, yes, the OTAs and all that, they definitely are more ahead because of the fact that they get to go on the field and do it with coaches and with the demand and with um, the veterans there with them and all that kind of stuff. So I absolutely think this class is, you know, ahead. That doesn't say that they weren't doing a good job, you know, but it's, I think, across the whole NFL that um, as a whole, the NFL rookies this year are going to be more ahead than the rookies last year. And so um, that's exciting for us because we, we have a lot of those guys that we're going to count on to play big, big roles for us. Team on Derek, guys. Go ahead, Paul. Hey, Derek. Um, you got connections to the two Raiders that are going in the Hall of Fame. Tom yeah. Flores, Fresno, Sanger, yeah. quarterback, Charles Woodson. Um, when you first got drafted in, in 14, Charles was in his second year of his second run here. Yeah. What is like a, something that sticks out in your mind about what he meant to this organization as a leader at that point in time? Oh, my goodness. Um, so I just saw one congratulations to both of them, you know. Um, that's that's so cool, you know, like just as a fan of theirs, you know, growing up, I was a huge fan of C. Wood, huge fan of Mr. Flores because of where I, where I grew up, you know, and uh, getting to know both of them has been an honor to me, you know, because I'm just a fan, you know, really, you know, I think we all are at some point, you're a fan of somebody and you get to meet them, it's pretty cool. And, uh, and C. Wood, um, I can't say, I can't limit his leadership to just when I played with him. He still is a leader to me. Uh, he still texts me. He still called me. You know, he still, he'll call me out and tell me, what are you doing? Do this, you know, and he'll still tell me when I'm doing a great job. You know, and I think uh, the demand he's always put on my life as a quarterback and as a, as a leader of the organization, you know, I think that he knew on his way out that, you know, Khalil and I were coming up as the leaders for the organization. And, uh, you know, just what he's always asked of us and demanded of us, he still does. I saw him at the... Uh, at that Tahoe golf tournament, and uh, you know, I hear I hear his "Hey, hey!" that Hall of Fame voice, you know, <laughs> and uh, I turn around, and sure enough, it was him. And I went over, gave him a hug, and we sat there and talked for ten minutes. And he's still, he's like, "Tell Brian Edwards this, tell Rugs this, hey, you, hey, do this," you know. <laughs> and uh, and I can't limit his leadership again to just that confined time. He's still, he's still a leader and a big brother to me, and um, I, I'll, I'll always be thankful to him because. I, he gets mad when I say this, but when I was six years old, I was pretending to be him, you know. And uh, the fact that he's like pouring into my life now is pretty cool. As, uh, as, as Henry transitions transitions into year two, um, getting in the ball a little bit more. I know a yeah. lot of it is on plays that are being called. What he's yeah. doing with the ball, building confidence uh, with you and, and with with uh, John. Uh, is he getting to that point? Um, do you feel like where yeah. you guys? He's starting to show you the things that he, you need to see and John Gruden needs to see to be more of a focal point. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's hard because uh, you know without the pads and without like those live reps, you know, it's hard. But like from where we're at right now, abs I would say absolutely. You know, um, you know this isn't. The one thing that's different about this, it's not high school where, like, it's like, man, I'm just going to throw to my favorite guy, <laughs> you know. Like, I don't care what the play is, we'll make it work, you know. You know, this, this, you know, a lot, of has, a lot of it has to do with, you know, we have a guy in Darren Waller. You know, it's hard to, you know, if you're calling the plays, it's hard to not call his number every time, you know. And, uh, you know, I think that Henry is getting into that place where I think that, I think the feeling is, like, he wants it, you know. Like, and he's going to not ask for it, he's just going to go show you. If that, if I hopefully I made that picture correct, you know, and it's 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 exciting because I think everyone that saw him, I mean, he looks bigger, you know, uh, you know, he's he's hopefully I get him to roll his sleeves up a little bit, you know, and uh, show those guns off, but he, you could tell the mindset was I'm going to go work to be better at what I think I need to be better at, and when he showed back up the um, the violence he was running his routes with, the speed he was coming off the ball with, you you know, it made you okay, you know, like. It, it was like you could feel it, you know, as, as Mr. Mayock would say, you could feel his speed, you could feel his presence. And I think the more he just gets comfortable in this offense, he's definitely comfortable around me. He's comfortable around Gressy. Then he's hugging him, joking with him, you know, all that. And uh, those are all good signs, you know, for uh, hopefully being able to give him. We, I, I wish everybody could catch 100 balls, you know. Uh, I really do. But, uh, again, it's hard to, 
take some away from Darren when he's been so productive and, and good for us. You know, if, if Darren had, you know, WR next to his name in the death chart, no one would care. You know, the fact that it's a tight end, like, well, why don't we get it to the, you know, it just is what it is. You know, if, if, if Henry can show when we put the pads on and all that, uh, I, which I'm fully confident he will, then, yeah, absolutely, I can see that happening. Thank you, everyone. Cool. Thanks. Thank you, yeah, thanks. Hey Max. Max, preseason, how, how much do you expect to play in the preseason and how important is winning in the preseason to you? Um, that's up to the coaches as far as how much I play. I'm not sure yet. We haven't really discussed that. Um, and as far as winning, I really don't think it comes, you know, it comes down to wins and losses. I feel like you know, individually we just got to get better you know, every single day and show improvement from you know, the start of camp to the finish. Max, um, the first time we had, uh, spoke with Gus over the Zoom, and then today, even with Derek, it's, it's, it seems like there's just a different energy that Gus Bradley brings to the, to the unit. Last year, we heard a lot of individual players as being keys to this or that. This one, it sounds like it's all one unit. You just talk about his presence and what it's meant to bring in the sort of the, the unit together as one. Yeah, you know, Coach Bradley has just brought a, a different energy. Um, you can talk to him about anything, you know, it can go from football to life to back to football, you know, in a matter of 10 minutes. So he's just, he's a, you know, he's, he's a ball of energy um, at all times. And that's what you want in a coach, you know, uh, he's a big positive influence in this building. And uh, I'm, you know, looking forward to playing, playing under him. Max, um, watching you during uh, individuals and, and what you guys are doing out there, drills, you can hear Max Crosby a lot out there. You're being really vocal with your teammates. Um, is that something new that you're maybe feeling a little more comfortable with expressing yourself in that way? And, and if so, um, what's behind, behind that? Um, you know, I'm going into year three. Um, for me personally, I'm sick of waiting. Uh, I just want to be the full version of Max Crosby that I envision um, myself being. So just being a leader, um, I think that's a role that um, I feel natural at. Um, I feel... You know, I can be a, a positive influence, you know, just like talking about Coach Bradley, being a, being a positive leader, um, being a, a, a ball of energy at all times. Uh, that's, that's what I want to be, and I want to help, you know, lead the guys. So I don't care about having, you know, the title, all right, Max is leader, whatever. Like, I'm just being myself and uh, having fun when I'm out there. Max, you seem like you've been able to grow a pretty unique bond with Yannick and Solomon and a lot of your new teammates that you have recently. Would you say that it's been pretty easy to develop that? Do you think this could potentially be the closest you've been with the defensive line core since you've been here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the new guys, it's, it's easy to become, you know, grow, grow relationships with, with guys who are, are willing, you know, to come into a new, you know, a new environment, new organization and, be nothing but good energy all the time. You know, Yannick, uh, Solomon, Q, all those guys, they're, they're ready to prove, you know, what they can do. Um, they've all had success in this league, but we all want to do it together and be the best. So at the end of the day, you know, it, we have to do it together. Four equals one at all times. So, you know, I think that's something, you know, as far as talking about leadership and things like that, like I want to build those real relationships off the field. And um, that's that translates to the field at the end of the day. So. When you look around uh, that room, your room, um, not to take anything away from the last couple of years and what the, anybody that was here, but does it feel a little bit different? It feels a little, a little deeper, uh, the, the rotation, uh, the length of that, of that room feel a little bit better? Yeah, you, well, you know, I'm fired up, you know, about the room. We have, we have a lot of potential, but I'm sick of saying that word. You know, I've, I hear it every single year. Um, I'm ready to just go out there on Sundays and, and play at a very high level. Obviously, as a defensive end, a lot of the times people focus on sacks and getting out the quarterback with you all. But how have you worked this offseason at, at becoming a better run defender and, and getting stronger in that area? Of the game? Uh, yeah, you know, I've always, um, I'm always working on, on my game 24-7. Um, I've been here in the building since February. So it's just working on everything, you know, getting healthy, um, getting healthy mentally and physically, um, getting, to, getting in the best possible shape I can be in. Um, and yeah, just being a complete player, I want to be as disruptive as I, you know, possibly can be, and that's that's what I plan on doing this year. Any early impressions of Alex Leatherwood, uh, the rookie right tackle? 
Yeah, you know, he's a, he's a kid that doesn't say much. Uh, he comes in and works, and that's, that's all you can expect from a rookie. You know, it's good to see. Um, he's not, you know, he doesn't have a big ego or anything. He's a first-round pick. You know, you want guys to come in and work. And I feel like this whole rookie class is, has a lot of guys similar to that. So um, it's encouraging to see, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, battling every single day with him. Is there anyone in the rookie class that is specifically standing out to you? Um, it's only been one day, so uh, we have, you know, they all, they all look good. You know, OTAs, everybody look good. Um, it's just, we'll see, you know, it's, it's one day at a time. Uh, I think once the pads come on, we'll, we'll find out more about people. To that note, I'm just curious, what, what do you look for, you know, day one of practice today? Like, what, what are we looking for out there? Um, I think today, uh, the day one is just about, like, you see who's been working and who's got work to, you know, work to do. So, um, you know, I love it. I love pushing, pushing the tempo, uh, getting the guys rolling. And, you know, I feel like after the first day, it just gets a, a tiny bit easier the next day. So I just always keep pushing that tempo and, and, you know, working on the cardio every single day. Yesterday, John had spoke pretty highly about the secondary. And he really talked out about Damon Arnett. Kind of had a, r- a rough, disappointing rookie season. Looks like he's put on 10, 15 pounds maybe. Um, just maybe talk about his work ethic coming into training camp and, and what he could mean to the secondary at full potential. Yeah, I love Damon. Uh, Damon's a really good kid. Uh, we have a really good relationship. I'm looking forward to him, you know, getting out there, being healthy, um, and just playing to his, you know, full potential. Um, he obviously got injured multiple times last year. He, had con- he got knocked out like two or three times. Uh you know, he just had some unfortunate things going on, but I know he's been working on himself um, as a person and working, you know, every single day, getting, you know, putting on weight, things of that nature, and training, you know, training his ass off. So I'm excited to see what uh, Damon brings to the table this year. You guys all set? All right. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank you. Question for him. Hey, Andre, take you back a little bit. Uh, what was it like coming to the organization as an undrafted free agent? And were there things about your mindset or having to really earn everything to uh, get to the point, help you get to the point you are now? Yeah, for sure. Uh, coming in, being undrafted, it, it was definitely kind of a blow. Um, you know, change of positions was also kind of a, a big thing, too. You know, when I got here, coach was like, yeah, you're going to play center. I'm like, perfect, let's do it. Didn't think I'd play center. Knew I was going to play somewhere interior because I didn't think of myself as a tackle. But my mindset was just, you know, just attack it, listen to everything I could, pick up as much I could from these older guys like Rodney and like everything Cape told me. And yeah, just took it day by day. Andre, did you at any point step in at center when you're at UCLA? And was it really a complete surprise to you that they even asked you when you got here to do that? You know, I, at UCLA, no, I never, never even snapped the ball. You know, I played guard for a little bit in uh, the spring, spring ball, but uh, was tackle the whole time. We didn't have a lot of tackles. Uh, every time we had a tackle come in, and they were like, "Yeah, you're going to go inside to play guard," and it never worked out. So uh, me and Colton, we we were the ones holding it down at tackle. And uh, but coming in, you know, going to the league, I had a feeling I was going to because of my height and you know my measurements. I was like, "Yeah, I think I'm gonna probably go play guard." And when he said I was going to play center, I was like, cool, let's do it. Andre, when you replace a guy like the person who's arguably most people think is the best center in the league, you mm-hmm. kind of go two ways on how to accept that or attacking it yourself. Like, how do you choose to do that in terms of what he taught you and then what the expectations will be when you begin to play? Right. You know, Rodney was, you know, arguably, mm-hmm. like you said, one of the best centers in the league. So every day I came in here, I just tried to get, you know, a little piece from him, a little information every day. And uh, that's just kind of the attack I still take on the day. Just every day, just get a little better. Just make, you know, just work on the little things and it adds up over time, get a little better. So everything I learned for him, I'm still using today. Andre, when you when you come up kind of as a, as a development player like you did, um, mm-hmm. the payoff isn't necessarily the game or short-term type goals. Um, what were you focusing on to kind of get you through what can be sometimes a lonely type of proposition? Um, you know what, it's, like I said, it was just, Day by day, it was just the little things, you know, working on, you know, I'm going to go out to practice and I'm going to work on this footstep for this play. I'm going to work out on these calls for these certain situations. Just the little stuff, man. They, they pay off huge in the end run. That said, does it feel different now being? No, you know, I, I, it, I still attack it the same way, you know, so. Andre, 
you've been uh, teammates with Colton Miller for a while. You guys developed a relationship at UCLA, kind of. How much has he been the guidance for you just as a teammate and as a friend from your time from UCLA to here now? Right. Colton's one of my best friends, man. You know, uh, coming to the league, I he was definitely a big mentor to me. You know, him, Richie, just hanging out with those guys, just showing me the ropes because it's, it's a little different from college, you know. But uh, me and him, we're both real close at UCLA, so to both end up here in the same the same play is awesome, man. I can't I can't even explain it. Chris, to Sean Reed from the Athletic. Um, obviously, you know you've taken practice snaps with Derek Carr before and started the game before. But how important will these three preseason games be just to get some more live snaps and kind of build that rapport before you guys get to the actual regular season? Right. I think uh, it's it's super important. I think just every day in practice is, you know, anytime I get a snap from him or anytime we're just talking about meetings, it's it's super important. I uh, got a lot of off season work with him, just going to the parks. Just talking over different situations, just getting a feel for it. It's been, it's been good. So uh, every, every time we get together, it's you know always got to work on that chemistry. So he said that you uh, had him over for some steaks and you eat different steaks than him. What what kind of steaks did you grill up? Oh man, I we had uh, we had, we had some good old tomahawk wagyu. Uh, smoked a smoked a sixteen pound brisket for twelve hours. Just had a bunch of the guys over, did some plate ribs. So it was a good little hurrah for before we start this camp up. Last year he. <laughs> He got a bunch of the guys together when you know things were shut down. They stayed distance, but to sort of build that rapport and get workouts in mm-hmm. seems to be something that he likes to do in terms of building that chemistry. Right. You get a feel of that since you ride in terms of having that that off field chemistry as well. Oh, for sure. I mean, you look at the guys that are there at the park training. It's the guys that are out there playing on Sundays. You know, it means something to them. So for to take you know to wake up at six o'clock in the morning. On a Wednesday in the off season, you know, to beat the heat and get out there on the field, it, it shows a lot, for, you know, for how bad you want this. So, Andre, this uh, this off season, it's, I mean, it's one thing that the, the coaching staff has has put their faith in you to be the starter at this point, but to also get an extension as well before you be, you, you set stepped on the field as full time starter. How does it feel to have that kind of faith put in you at this point? Uh, it feels awesome, man. Honestly, like uh, just uh. It gives me confidence, you know, having confidence from these coaches. So it helps me uh, not worry as much. Not that's it, it helps me elevate my game and worry like I feel like I have no need to worry so I can go out there and play as hard as I can. Andre, uh, Derek mentioned earlier that he got very confident in you just when you had to step in and play in Detroit and uh, get those snaps with him. And uh, do you think from that game here, do you think that was a kind of like a stepping stone for you to like kind of like mentally be like, I can be in this league, I can – play just with the best of them oh for sure when uh ronnie went down in that houston game uh i, I felt super confident i i always prepared my mindset like i could go in there at any time and that's just how i had to prepare for each game like i was going to start that game so when my number was called just next man up mentality Andre, how much communication goes into what you do with Derek and trying to really uh, be cohesive as a unit and your new role here it's a lot of communication. I think uh, throughout the week, you know, breaking down certain formations and certain uh, what we need to do for certain protections, it's it's good to be on the same page. So we talk a lot, you know, whether it's text or where it's meetings, It's there's a lot of communication that goes into it. Well, a couple of your teammates have mentioned that you've really kind of taken a hold of, the, of a leadership role, which is expected as the starting center. How has that transition been for you going from – from behind, sitting behind Rodney to just being a leader on this team? Uh, like I said earlier, like uh, everything I picked up from Rodney, whether the preparation throughout the game week, I, I, I prepared like a starter. So so now it doesn't feel any different. It always, it always in my mindset, I always went into it feeling like I was going to play that game. So that's still how I'm attacking it right now. Okay, it's all good? Okay. Right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.
Well, I mean, just just, just come in and and, and play a, a, a bigger role. You know, I got to play a vital role. I mean, even with the with the uh, the veterans coming in, you know, with the John Brown, I still gotta still gotta take leadership. You know, in the room, I feel like I have to, you know, I have to lead the way for the guys. What sort of expectations are you setting for yourself, both on and off the field, talking about being a leader? Uh, I mean, just I mean, like I said, just just taking on a bigger role and and being you know being that go-to guy for for not only not only my room but for the offense and even for the team. Henry, you finally got a chance to go through a regular offseason uh, in the NFL. Uh, mm-hmm. How much difference uh, do you feel that was compared to what you had to go through last year? Uh, it's, it's it's an incredible difference. I mean, it's just it, the biggest thing is confidence. I mean, and going in going in with with this new group of guys, I mean, we just just developing, developing the chemistry, you know, throughout, you know, throughout OTAs and mini camp, it's just, I mean, it's it's a lot better, and the camaraderie is just there, like unlike last year. Derek talked a lot about some of the work that you put in during the off season and really trying to develop a chemistry. What has that been like for you, the off season process, getting to be able to prove yourself coming in this year? I mean, it's just, it's just, just a lot of hard work. I mean. I put a lot of weight on my shoulders on, like I said, not only being being a leader, but developing a a, a, a larger role in the offense and even on the team. So, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, myself, I'm, I'm motivated to, to do some big things this year. And, I mean, you know, Derek is the quarterback. He's the leader of the team right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm under him whenever I need to be. What did you do in the offseason to kind of, like, I mean, just 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 work on myself. Pretty much find out, you know, anything that that people say I I wasn't good at or need to work on, and just hammer down on it. Henry, kind of moving, kind of continuing with the offseason training. You spent a lot of time back in Montgomery in the training program that was really extensive. You put on a lot of weight. Kind of, how much did it mean to you mentally to be back at home in your hometown and also really get to work out with a lot of familiar faces? I mean, it's um, I mean, it's always fun to be back home, and and with familiar faces, it only makes you work harder because you're having fun. But I mean, when you when you're in a comfortable setting like that, it just it just makes you makes you want to go even harder. And being around a group of guys like that 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 push you all the time, that you grew up with, that you know all have a common goal, it, it only makes it that much better. Henry, you look noticeably bigger. Um, was that just kind of the natural progression of things, or was it an, an intent uh, on your part to get bigger? And if so, how has it changed? Uh, uh, it was definitely, it was definitely, it was, it was my my main focus. I mean, it's a it's a man's game now, and you know, I'm I'm not the biggest guy, but I have to I have to you know get to where I can compete with with grown men now. So so that was one of my biggest you know biggest things that I hammered on was you know getting bigger, eating all the time, and just hammering down in the weight room, and I mean, from from people saying you know I look noticeably bigger, so I guess it's paying off. Sometimes there's a fine line between that because you're a speed guy, you don't want to lose the speed. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you've you've actually gained speed, gained explosiveness as a result? Uh, yeah, I mean, just I mean, even even in the weight room, you still I mean, you work on different things, but you know, when you're gaining weight, you still have to do the you know you still have to do the the little guy things that 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 you know that I'm known for, so. You know, still hammered on those things and just just got better in the things that I needed to work on. Was putting on the weight and getting in the weight room and stuff, was that something you kind of felt in the games last year that you needed to do? Did, did it come up in meetings with coaches? Or what, what, what really was the impetus that made you know? Um, it was, I mean, it was mostly it was mostly personal. You know, and, and, and sometimes, you know, if I'm blocking, I'm just, like, getting in the way. And, and sometimes, you know, I was moved out the way. And, I mean, I didn't I didn't like that personally, so. I don't want to be a guy that's just just threw around or just trying to be in the way. Henry, when, when Derek says that Mike Mayock tells him that he can feel your speed, what does that mean to you? I mean, that just, I just means I'm I'm doing what I need to do. How much weight did you put on? Around 13 pounds. Henry, you said some of the things you worked on was you said what was out there and that people said I needed to work on it. Aside from your physicality and, and building lean muscle mass, whatever it may have been, as far as skill sets on the field, what what specific things did you want to pinpoint for yourself to get better? I mean, honestly, anything. I mean, anything I heard, you know, I, I, I take it into consideration, and, and I'm going to work on it. You know, if I, even if I feel like I was good at it, I can always be better at it. So, I mean, anything, anything that I ever heard, I, I worked on it. 
I mean, when you look at this offense, how good do you think it could be? I think we have the potential to be great. You know, one of the one of the top offenses. I mean, we had we had a lot of the pieces last year, and I mean, this year we know exactly what pieces we need to work on and what we need to do to to, to take that next step. And I, I feel like you know everybody's on the same page to do that. Yeah. Almost to a man uh, on the defensive side of the ball, when, when guys have been asked questions about potential and trying to get better, uh, it's almost like we're sick of talking about that. We need to get it done. Yeah. Um, do you feel like there's a sense of urgency on that side of the ball to uh, to to be a reliable uh, group and, and hold up your end of the bargain? Yeah, I mean, I think the the most effective way to win games is to play complimentary football. So like, all all units have to contribute to a win, right? So the offense, defense, special teams, we got to do our job to help win games. Um, and the, you know, the past is the past. We're going to move forward and grow together. When you look at this group, do you feel like it's in position to do just that? Absolutely. I think we have the opportunity to grow together. Um, excited for the opportunity and ready to go. Nick, what are your thoughts? First day of camp overall and Gus Bradley, your impressions of him? I was excited day today. Got out there with the guys, you know, run around a little bit. Obviously, we didn't get to do anything full speed with uh, doing walkthroughs. Uh, Coach Bradley's energy is always up, and I think the whole defense feeds off of it. Um, so he's been a great addition to us for sure. Hey Nick, um, like in year, in couple years past, it seemed you played well as the season went along. You seemed to finish strong most seasons, and yet when camp came around, you're kind of back to having to prove yourself again. Do you feel that way now, or do you feel different this season? I mean, every season I go into, I got one one objective, and that's to get better. No matter what it is, no matter what's in front of me, um, you, you never arrive in this league. Every day you got to earn it, um, and so that's what I'm deciding to do this year. You know, go out there and earn it, and uh, get better. Nick, uh, Coach Green's been really vocal about how much he really appreciates you and how you're one of his favorite players. Can you just kind of talk about the relationship that you have with Coach Green and how much you've grown as a player while he's been your head coach? Yeah, no, I think mean, coming back to, to the Raiders resigning with him, um, the big thing was just having a having a relationship with the guys in the room, having a relationship with the team, um, growing that bond through the ups and downs. And I think that's more important than I feel like a lot of us should consider as players is going somewhere where we can grow together, right? It's always cool to be a part of something that's already been established, but when you have the chance to grow it and you're in the muck with it and you're, you know what I'm saying, you're fighting for it, it means a lot to you. And so this organization means a lot to me. Coach Gruden means a lot to me. The team means a lot to me. Um, and that's the biggest reason why I wanted to resign here because I, I, the, the bond that I've grown with the players and coaches uh, mean a lot to me. Nick, uh, when defensive schemes or similarities, differences, you're making a change in leadership at, um, uh, on defense. Is it? Would you consider it a drastic change schematically or subtle change? Um, if you could talk about that a little bit. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're going from, you know, Coach Gunther was a lot of split safety. You know, Coach Coach uh, Bradley is, is post safety. So, and that's the difference. But, you know, with Coach Gunther, we had a lot of versatility. We had a lot of different calls. Um, and so we dabbled in some of the things that we do now. Um, obviously, there's some different things, different rules, um, different assignments. But, um, you know, once you've been, in, like, like I said, my, my rookie year was Coach Norton. It's kind of similar to what we do now, so I've kind of seen a little bit of what, we, what we're doing now before. Um, but obviously, you know, concepts are concepts. They're all the same. Hey, Nick, this is John Reed from the Athletic. I know you said you're very much so focused on the moment and you know, improving, but have you ever been able to kind of take a step back and, you know, appreciate where you come from, you know, being, you know, where you went to college in Greenville and you know, being the first player out of there to sign an NFL yeah. contract to, to be where you are now? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's something that I think that grounds me a lot. All right, I, you can never forget where you come from. It, it definitely is your foundation. Um, I, I'm, I'm grateful. Like, I, I'm really not supposed to be here, right? You know, Division three guy, all these other things. And to be able to, to be in the league and, and be in the league as long as I have, I'm eternally grateful, and I, I don't take it for granted at all. Yeah. Nick, outside of uh, you, Corey, and Kwiatkowski, kind of the rest of the linebacking core is uh, kind of unproven or untested at the NFL level. So, Kind of, what are you expecting out of those guys? What are you demanding out of those guys to kind of get them in the place where they need to be? Yeah, we go back to the idea of we got to grow together, right? So we got to we got to be able to put those put our arms around those guys and say, hey, look, you know, let's get in the meeting room, let's let's go over the things you've seen, 
um, talked to him pre-snap. Like, it was out there today with Javen, and he was just talking pre-snap. And I was like, yeah, that's a good alert, but let's make sure we, you know, see this, whatever the case may be. So it's definitely one of those things where you, you kind of take him under your wing and you say, hey, look, let's, let's look at these things together. Let's break it down together. Let's make sure we're all on the same page so that you have no, all your questions are answered. If the coach, if we can't answer, we go to the coach if, and we figure it out together. So that's the biggest thing is just doing it together, growing together. Last year was a crazy year for a lot of reasons. Uh, do you feel like it's, there's a sense of normalcy returning uh, this year? Uh, normal? I don't know. I mean, it's, this is different because, you know, we've been in Oakland, right? And now we're in Las Vegas, so it's, it's different, right? Usually during this time we're in Napa. So I don't know about normal. This is the new normal, you know? So we all got to adjust and adapt. Kevin Mays' rookie season was cut short. What sort of player do you think he has the potential? I mean, it's early, so I, don't, I, can't, I can't really speak of what kind of player he is. But I can say this, he's, he's worked really hard. He's worked extremely hard. He's been in the weight room. He did his rehab. He stayed, he stayed um, after the OTAs. He stayed here and trained. Um, he's looking really good. He's, he's picking it up. He's, he's making his lurch. He's making his checks. Um, so I'm excited to see what Tanner does. You mentioned Javen. Uh, he's a guy, he turned a lot of heads last training camp. Uh, how have you seen him progress since then? Has he gotten even better in the last year? He has. I mean, the thing about Javen, he's, he's, he's tall, but he's extremely athletic, and he's fast, and he plays with good bend. And so you can when you can put those combinations together and you figure out how to use your length. Obviously, he's not he's not as heavy, so he's a little bit light. So he's got to be able to use his length as leverage against blockers. So that helps. Um, but he's picking it up. He's, he's understanding the defense, um, and this thing is just playing fast and putting that on display every game. So. Hey Nicholas, in this in this new defense, where does your skill set fit best? Is it is or is it really even a traditional a Sam or Mike or Will? Where, where do you kind of fit in this new scheme? Yeah, like I guess I, I I consider myself a versatile player. So. Whatever role the team needs me to play, that's what I want to play. Um, I've obviously played outside. Um, and then in this system with Coach uh, Norton, we had a different alignments. We had man alignments. So essentially, the wheel could be playing Mike and the Mike could be playing wheel. So we kind of, I've kind of done um, all of it, really. And so I'm just whatever the, whatever the defense needs me to do, that's what I'm willing to do. And whatever role I have, uh, I accept it and, and go forward. But you're kind of the Mike a little bit today. And, and granted, the first day, you're yeah. kind of just going through the motions. But it looked like a different yeah. for you. Yeah, I mean, it's early. It's day one. So we'll see. Whatever the role is, I'll, I'll play it and embrace it. Let's do one more, guys. Yesterday, John was really high on the secondary. You know, he talked very positively. For, I mean, his down the season the defense had. What's different this year? I mean, you talked about the, the coordinators, the systems. But as far as the mindset, the attitude, the work ethic, just the difference this, this season coming into training camp. Uh, I'll say it again. It is early. So, you know, I think when it's early, there's always a lot of optimism, and, and that's a good thing, right? That can carry you over and, and give you some momentum going into the season. Um, but I think guys are, are locked in and, and prepared. With, with the same scheme being a little more simplistic, it allows players to play faster. It allows the younger guys to understand it, to pick it up and play faster. So I think people are excited about the opportunity just to play faster, play a little free. Um, we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you. Thanks,